excited for our team for this win. You know, inside the locker room, man, just a lot of uh, emotions and and energy in there. Uh, very happy for our guys. You know, I I think you know the with the fans rushing uh, the field there at the end. I'm thinking about. Um, December, January, guys that um, had a chance to leave and didn't leave and decided to stay. I'm thinking about staff uh, that had opportunities to leave um, after last year and decided to stay. Um, you know, we we recruited and hired some new coaches. I'm, I was thinking about them, you know, coming into, you know, what is going on, you know, and they 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 decided to come. So I just think of that. I think, you know, there's there's sometimes when you think of, you know, if you can catch the identity of being an orphan, I think, when you want it to be the identity of a family. And so I just think there's so much work that goes into that. And I think there is, um, you know, on both sides. And just really proud of uh, the results that come from that work. And so, you know, um, happy for our guys, happy for our coaches. Take any questions you guys got. Dave, the, the field goal, um, the point dif differential for the Big 12 championship game, is that something you thought about earlier in the week, or did it just come to you, or how, how did that process go? No, it was something that, we, that was talked about early in the week, and then, you know, we were really trying to not let them score. Um, that was really when it came up again, and uh, unfortunately that didn't happen. And so when that happened, you know, um, we wanted to get back on the scoreboard to uh, to help with that differential. Dave, just to clear that up, the only way that would come into effect would be a three-way tie. Correct. Okay, we we I haven't seen it yet. How far down the list is point differential in all that, or do you know? I'm not sure. I'm not okay. sure the actual. I, I think it's second. I want to say, but um, you know that came up though because I think if things go the way that it, um, I mean, there's a bunch of ways things could go, but one way could be is that you have some two lost teams, and so we want to be in that position. I, I don't know what the reaction is from OU, but do you understand how that could be interpreted another way, Correct. kicking that field goal late? Yeah, I think they're, they're not happy with it. Yeah. Dave, you, I think you mentioned Coach Roberts in your TV post game. Can you just talk about what he has brought to this? And he just seems like he's got a knack for OU. Yeah, I I've give a lot of credit to Ron. I think there was some um, there was some changes on his side of it, uh, you know, staff wise, some movement. I think there's probably a lot of emotion on that side of it early in the week. Hadn't really been a part of anything like that, and. Um, you know, focus-wise, distraction-wise, I think all of that was uh, real. And you know, uh, to keep your eyes on the target and to keep guys working um, on on things that uh, they can control, as opposed to things that are outside of it, I think is um, um, I, I think it was huge today. You know, and I think. Um, you know, Ron, he woke up with his game face on this morning, and so we could, I could tell there's some uh, there's some intensity there, and I think that fed off to the group, and I'm really happy for him. I think, you know, he's been a mentor to me. I think there's been, um, you know, his career has, um, you know, has there's a lot of positive things. I think this is this is going to be one of those big positives for him. I'm happy for him. Dave, speaking of intensity, just from the, that very first defensive series of the game, your guys were playing with a lot of fire, a lot of energy. Uh, how good was that to see, and and how do you bottle that and take it on the road to Manhattan? Yeah, yeah, I um, no, I appreciate that question. I think you know, right when you're asking the question, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm forming just um, you know it it shouldn't matter, you know, that we lost. And it really shouldn't matter that we're playing OU. Um, I think, unfortunately, it, right now, a little bit it does. And I think, you know, so many things that I'm proud of with this team. Um, the one, one thing that sticks out the most of uh, room for growth 
is this right here is that it matters and it, and it can't you know and I think there was a there's a great there's a uh, a drive by our offense the fourth quarter took a bunch of time off the clock and uh, scored a touchdown at the end and I think like that's a great example of what can happen when it doesn't matter right when you're up and you're still driving and you're moving people and everyone you know to the sidelines happy and smiling and all this other thing but I'm gonna um, put a grimace on my face or whatever it is and hit someone in the face, you know? And I think that those things um, we're gonna use to teach off of, because we have to get better in that area. And I, you know, we're gonna be tested for sure next Saturday. Coach, you're talking about playing to a standard there, pretty much regardless of what happened in the past. Every coach that we'll hear from every week says a version of that. Mm -hmm. And yet we see losses in November, derail seasons, mm -hmm. and the performance is never the same. And yet you guys played some of your best football today off of a disappointment last week. So mm -hmm. the culture that has to exist in the locker room mm -hmm. to get that kind of performance mm -hmm. coming off a negative, how do you install that? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it starts with people. I think the person drives the player. And I think it's, it's um, being real with uh, what's real. I think, you know, I think there's so many times you can skip and go right to plays and go right to um, schemes. And um, they, you know, they did play a part today, but that, um, but they were driven by people, and they were driven by connection, and they were driven uh, by, you know, I'm not going to let this person down, right? Um, I'm going to back this person up, and I think those are, um, those are really key, and I think those come from um, seeing people, hearing people, and valuing people, and I think sometimes, for coaches particularly. You have to get out of the way for that to happen. I think sometimes guys puff their chest and and kind of get big in a space and block out the sun. And uh, players in times do that too. But I think the ability to get connection and for everyone, you know, the people that are coming from all different types of um, um, all different types of backgrounds, for them to come together and, and play as a unit is. That's, that's one of the things you love about football, you know. But I, I you know. The, the ability, though, to, to do that when it's the hardest and to do it when the pressure's on, I think, is, an, is another level. And uh, I'm proud of our team in taking that step. Dave, just in breaking down Caleb Williams this week, what did you guys feel like you saw mm -hmm. that you could get to him and really get him off his game? Because he looked pretty frazzled there, especially in the third quarter before they benched him. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think that the, our ability to stop the run on defense has been a game changer for us. I think initially at the start of the year, um, we had to defend the run with eight man fronts and, you know, run stunts or run blitzes or run coverages, you know, and more or less if they had seven, we have eight and, you know, eight and nine and all that, like plus one. And we struggled to defend the run. And it, and it, and it, it kind of goes back to that it's not the scheme, it's not that, it's the execution, right? It's the energy guys bring. And I think, um, the the advent of run defense, and we've talked about cars and trucks in here, and just the 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 um, owning of responsibility and owning like of like I am a Ram truck, right, and all of that and playing technique, we have now been able to to defend the run with not playing run fronts and run pressures and run coverages, and so now we can bracket this guy or vice that guy or lurk or play cut you know two man on that guy right and do these things and uh, still defend the run and so that was on display today and so i think you know when there's light boxes and you run it and we stop them and then there's light boxes and you throw it the numbers are on our side of it so that was what was happening dave did you get to speak to lincoln or anyone on their staff there at the end i talked to lincoln very quickly i think he was uh, like we talked about i think it was um I think he was upset. I can understand why. And so I think for me, that's something I'd want to explain to him. His comment was that it was the code of sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. He understood your decision making. Mm -hmm. He thought you broke some sort of code. Mm -hmm. what, what is your response to that? I can understand that. I, I can understand that it's emotion and it's an emotional game. And I consider Lincoln a friend. And so I imagine we'll talk here pretty quick. Uh, Dave, where are the areas after you all played so well today that you feel like you maybe need to improve the most in the next two weeks? 
Um, I think the um, consistency on um, on special teams. I think the, our return game. I think there's there's glimpses of that today. I think for us, you know, I, we we can go back to Iowa State game where you know here's what can be possible, and I think that's just a phase that uh, we can get better at and really have a, as a weapon. I think for games coming up, it needs to be. Um, I think to keep the energy and the focus just overall as a team, you know, starting on Monday, you know, um, our Monday practice this past week, I think there was just a um, almost, uh, it was almost like the what the locker room I just left was at the start of a Monday practice, which generally that's not the case, you know. And so there was a, just a ton of energy and uh, we're going to have to recreate that and get that going to have the week that we need for the game that we uh, that we have, you know, so that, that would be two. And then I think third would be, I think the consistency of the O line running the ball. I think there was, there, you know, um, Jeff does a really good job early on of keeping people off balance, of throwing when it's usually a run or run looks to throw, right, to soften up people to get the run. And then generally that goes. And then there's generally some type of adjustment we have to make. And that was all very true today, just that same type of uh, path. But I think uh, we can still be better and run it no matter what it is and no matter what the look is. And um, we have yet to take that step. Dave, you mentioned Coach Roberts had to make some st staff adjustments. So, so who's coaching the outside linebackers now? I don't know if we can say yet. I think he's not officially hired. I think you know he was. Um, let me just say this: you know he's been with me and been with Ron. He's a trusted guy. I think you know um, when when I think of defensive staff wise, I think there's like a with Ron and I there is a um, um, there's a there is a style of defense. There is a um, there is a method to the madness. There is a um, a logical way that we like to think through things. Um, there's certain ways we like to pressure certain coverages that we kind of tend to. I think you know I love the the ability after the year to kind of talk um, schemes with other coaches because it becomes very apparent which school you're from in terms of you know what type of school of coaches you're from because you uh, are kind of talking that language and so this this guy would be you know our school you've seen you have seen and studied and coached defenses in different years in different places and i would guess they're all uh, distinctive based on personnel or attitude or whatever what do you think distinguishes this one that you have here I think we've got guys that have a lot of pride in being a Baylor. Um, we have a, we have guys that have have seen a lot of change and upheaval, and um, are resilient. And um, you know, being a Baylor means something, right? And Baylor playing good defense means something, and it's personal, and so they fight for it. Coach, what was your message in the locker room last week after a disappointing performance on the road? And what is it after today, especially given, I mean, the way that that field goal transpired there at the end? It's kind of the same, really. I mean, you know, I, talk, I mentioned earlier, one of the things I'm, I'm disappointed in so far with myself is our inability to say it doesn't matter, right? You know, we're down by this. It doesn't matter. We're on the road. It doesn't matter, you know? They um, they overcooked my waffle for breakfast. It doesn't matter, you know. All right? I'm sitting in the middle on a plane ride. It doesn't matter, you know. And I think for I think for the majority that's true. I think for some it still matters. And I think we've got to get to the point where it don't, you know. And so I think you know you win, you lose. It doesn't matter, right? And so like you know on the other side of it we talk about pound the rock. And so that would be probably in a positive way saying that it don't matter, man. Keep at it, right? The standard is the standard. And I think, um, you know, I think all of what has happened before leads up to where we are now. And so I'm excited for this next week. We'll attack it. Dave, this was early on kind of an emotional week with the decision by Joey. How do you think your players handled that? And that almost in some cases inspired them. Uh, I don't know. I think it was, you know, there. Um, I think it. I think Monday was hard. 
I think Tuesday was um, probably still hard. I think Wednesday, you know, I think like I was telling some of the uh, coordinators, I think by Wednesday, I don't think I had watched a lot of tape personally. I just felt, I felt um, out of sorts really, just with all of it. And so it was, um, this, it was a difficult week, you know? And so I think to, um, for, for our players to, to keep the focus on the focus is a great, is a great, um, is a great display by them. It's almost like, you know, um, teaching the teacher a little bit, a little bit. Um, but I thought our practices were the best practices that we've had this week. We're our best practices that, since I've been at Baylor that we've had. And I, I credit them. And, and I think, um, you know, a little bit of a perfect storm of OU coming in and coming off the loss, right? We can't think like that, though, anymore. I think that the, the, the way that operates is limiting. And so, uh, you know, the rest of the season will be, can we push past that? Coach, you mentioned it earlier, that tribe that put you guys up 24-7 in a world where we see, you know, double-digit leads and teams go conservative, three and outs in those situations. Mm -hmm. How impressive was that drive? It was strong. I thought, you know, I think the, um, the ability of us to run the ball is the, the difference. And I think our runners and their physicality and, you know, I think the, um, the rhythm that they get into I think makes the difference. And then, you know, Gary running the ball, I think you, know, you go back um, to the two games Iowa State played OU, and there's a fair amount of cracks and then end of rounds. We used to call them crack and loads, so crack and then load on the perimeter. And they, um, they really featured crack and load in their game plans, you know, Iowa State versus OU. And then, you know, Kansas had, had um, some success versus OU earlier in the year with crack and loading. And um, we went ahead and did some of that as well. And so I think the ability to, to with, with the crack and load and outflank people, right, and get numbers that are in here to, to move out here opens up in here. And so I think we were able to play off that game and that drive particularly. All right, so time we have. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.